Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, and welcome to DC Fans United. So today I'm going to be doing a review of Sideways number one, which came out this year. I'm a little behind the curve because this book's been out for a little bit, but I'm finally doing my review of it now. Now I've done reviews on some of the other DC New Age of Heroes books, including Damage number one and two, The Silencer number one and two, and The Terrifics number one. So I'm doing a review of Sideways number one now, and and I'll do a review of Terrifics number two here pretty soon. So starting off with who worked on this book, it was written by Dan Didio and Justin Jordan. Kenneth Rockefort worked on the art and Daniel Brown was the colorist and Kenneth Rockefort also did the cover. Now the cover is pretty okay, it's just real super basic. It shows the main character, the title character, sideways, and the title and all that. So we'll go ahead and start off on the first page. Now one thing about this book, and when I did my live stream a little while back and talked to Matt Invictus, we talked about the DC New Age of Heroes books and when we talked about Sideways, I was definitely defending all of the New Age of Heroes books, and the way I went about defending Sideways and what I still believe is that it's a book that's not really for me. I'm 32 years old, and while I can appreciate comics that are written for younger people, Sideways strikes me as definitely being for the young adult audience, particularly teenagers, so let me know what you think down in the comments if you agree. But just because of that, it didn't really appeal to me as much as some of the other titles, like Damage, for instance. So even with that in mind, I think I might have been a little too kind to Sideways when we talked about it before. So we'll go ahead and start off on the first page. And the first two pages are the fold-out poster that comes with all of the number one issues of DC's New Age of Heroes books. So that's always cool. And then we start on the first actual page. Now take a look at this. This is the first page. This is your first impression of... This is the first page in the first issue, okay? So this is what you see. A full splash page of some girl brushing her teeth and like cleaning her face with one of those, you know, oxy pads, you know, to remove acne. So that's what we're treated to. Our very first thing is this disgusting scene. So he teleports into this girl's bathroom while she's brushing her teeth and stuff before school. And we see on the next page that he gets smacked. Literally, we see the sound smack. And he gets punched and flies out into the next room. And she comes out and says, what are you doing? Are you out of your mind? And he says, wait, wait, it's me. And she says, I know it's you, you moron. What makes you think you can just pop into my bathroom? So he can just rift from place to place. And he went to visit his friend. See, at first I thought it was his girlfriend. They're just friends. So that is really a bizarre and creepy thing for a teenage boy to do. So anyways, it's before school and he came over to tell her he likes the costume because she made it for him and then on that very next page you know she's still upset about it so she punches him in the shoulder and she's like wow wow it was like hitting a wall so what happened the page before when you punched him and he flew across a room into another room now when you punch him in the shoulder it's like hitting a wall I don't know so we go to the next page and he is showing off that he has strength because she asks if he is as strong as Superman. And he says, not as strong, but I do all right. Picks up her dresser, which isn't very smart because he's not supposed to be there and they're supposed to be quiet. So right on the next panel, someone's knocking on the door and saying, what is going on in there? So he riffs out and then the girl's older sister comes in and there's a little back and forth which is kind of funny, dialogue. And then we go to the next page, and we see his parents. So he has adopted parents, he's been adopted, and his mom takes him to school, and he's at school. And we see a couple pages about how he's different, and he's an outcast, and how all the other kids are talking about him. And I think if you were a teenager, you could probably really relate to that, and be like, yeah, that's how it is. But I don't know, to me, it was just like teenage drama. So then there's a page that's a flashback to when he gets his powers, and this actually took place in Metal, I believe. 
So that takes up a couple pages, and it's kind of neat because he rifts through one side of this big mountain that has surfaced in Gotham, just appeared, and he rifts through it and comes out on the other side. So I did think that was pretty cool. So there's a couple more pages of him at school, and then he rifts out, and he goes to the top of this building and puts on his outfit and rifts away again. And then this was a part, like, you know, if I'm reading a comic, I want to relate to the hero or, like, identify with what he's doing. So he's just gotten his powers, he's had them for a week, and he's rifting around like a buffoon, honestly, just being dumb. He's taking video of himself on his cell phone, he's gonna put it on YouTube, he's gonna be a big YouTuber, which is like, dude, you have superpowers, who cares? So anyways, he riffs and like a, you know, he doesn't even do it right, he ends up in a lake, and he's talking about how that wasn't what he meant to do, and then we see this voice, and it says, stop. And then it says, accept the crisis ultimatum, your infractions must cease. But he just keeps rifting from place to place. And the voice says, I said stop. And then it says, ignorance delays the inevitable, do not task me further. And he just keeps rifting along like he's ignoring it and thinks he can get away from it. And <laughs> he rifts all over the place, you see he runs through a women's room even. And then he rifts into the sky and falls and loses his phone and drops his phone and then he says my mom's gonna kill me because he dropped and broke his phone and then we see this this is the final page we see this big being floating in the sky and he says you have been judged a threat to the continued existence of this space time since you seem unwilling or unable to cease your dangerous and lawless behavior your sentence is death and sideways just says wait what Okay, and that's how it ends. So basically, the title character hero guy, all he did was clown around, act inappropriately with his female friend, break some kind of space law, and you know, he knows about Superman, I don't know, but having read Crisis on Infinite Earths and all these things like Countdown and Final Crisis, of course there's monitors and things that are, you know, he should have stopped and asked what was talking to him instead of just going on with it. So I know he's a teenager, but he's a total clown, totally unlikable. Uh, I hope they really improve his character in the second issue, or yeah, I, I guess I'm gonna have to go with Matt Invictus on this one and say I did not like Sideways. Alright, so that's all for now. Let me know what you think in the comments. What'd you think about this book? I didn't really touch on the art too much. It's definitely passable. It's not my style and sometimes it's lazy like this cityscape here. It's basically just a photograph. I mean, maybe he traced the photo, but it looks like they just loaded up a photo <clears throat> of New York City and kind of tweaked it a little. And just the art throughout it is it's definitely okay, but it's not my style. So let me know what you think about this book and about the DC New Age of Heroes books overall. I still love the Terrifics and I love Damage. I think those are really good. And I'm looking forward to the New Challengers and the Immortal Men when they come out. All right, that's all for now. Please subscribe if you aren't subscribed. And as always, thank you for being a part of DC Fans United. End of line.